Hello, hello. Welcome to another live. I hope you're enjoying your week. Today is Wednesday. Normally I go live on Tuesdays, but I decided to change it. I was thinking about stopping this feature on my channel, doing lives because I started my tattoo apprenticeship this week. So I work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Today I have to take off because I teach classes today, I work today. So the my boss, the tattoo artist, he told me that I could have today off. And I thought, well, since I have the time, I might as well see if anybody would enjoy a live, a live stream. So I'm just doing this. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, Let me know if the sound is okay. I would appreciate that. If there's any weird glitchy sounds going on or anything that I'm not aware of. Uh, so I started the tattoo apprenticeship on Monday and uh, <laughs> it's it's a nice shop. They, it's just one guy 
he well he has a friend there right now but it's his studio he works alone he doesn't have any other people there except for one of his friends is there acting as like a secretary and then i'm there as an apprentice and then there's another girl who comes in in the late evening and uh it's a weird schedule i go in at one and i leave at nine but that's that's basically what tattoo artists do they work starting noonish and then go until late sometimes he tattoos until 12 30 one o'clock and uh and all of that but it's just an interesting culture i really like i've i've watched a bunch of the reality shows and that's all fake but i've never been inside a studio and actually like for a long extended period of time i've been into some which are like you know like exactly what you would think like the stereotypical shop with the the art on the walls the skulls the rock music you know all sorts of interesting people walking through um i've been in those but then i i also have gone into i don't know if anybody has gotten tattoos or whatever but there's some shops that are very clean and very like modern looking and and very much like a business and i think once i finish and i'm able to have a little shop of my own i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna have my own thing just a little place uh and just do everything myself and not have not work in a really big studio because it can get complicated when you deal with a bunch of people like I've, I've been there two days and uh well i went in today too for a little bit in the morning because he was doing a type of tattoo that i really wanted to to see because that's most of it with the apprenticeship we were learning all of the all of the technical aspects we're practicing certain things but a lot of the time we're watching him do tattoos which is pretty awesome and asking questions and stuff um but ever since i've been there there's you know drinking drugs not anything like hardcore or anything like that that i know of <laughs> at least where i am uh, I don't see that, but there's a lot of that going on and it's just, it's not my, my vibe being in a place like that, which is, I mean, to each his own, but it's funny. It reminded me of when I was working as a waiter at a few restaurants and there was the same thing. There was a bunch of stuff going on in the back and I just didn't fit into that or at least they realized very quickly that i wasn't in that world and you know there was a separation like i would talk to them i was friendly with them but i would never go out afterwards and you know go to a bar or anything like that just because that wasn't my thing and and the same here like he's asked me like you know bro he's like a typical like he's he's uh he's mexican but he lived in california he he had a he actually he had a tattoo his own tattoo shop in atlantic city but before he was working on in uh venice beach like that whole like yeah man yeah and uh like exactly what i would have expected he's a really nice guy but i can tell there's like a lot going on in his life so i just try to stay professional and and do my job and learn as much as i can so that i can take that and do my own thing with it which is the ultimate goal but when um oh yeah i was saying when i was working in the restaurant 
it was that same thing like i would walk into the break room and they all be talking and laughing and then they they they'd see me coming and and somebody would be like shut up francis is coming like don't stop talking about that stuff he doesn't want to he doesn't want to hear that so that's that's pretty cool like when you meet people that can respect your your boundaries and i think also something that i've always had is like i don't judge people for what they're doing i mean obviously i'm judging like their behavior and stuff but the person like i don't know what's going on in their life i don't know all the details and i'm not going to ask questions so if they say something or if they do something it's like all right if it doesn't affect me if it's it's their it's their life it's their decision but i'm not doing that i'm not going down that same road if you know what i mean it's complicated though Ta the tattoo world is a very complicated environment I think as it's seen more and more mainstream and not so rebellious, I think it'll take on many forms, but it still has that aspect. But anyway, um, yeah, let me know if you're watching this afterwards, if, uh, if you have any stories or anything your experiences with the tattoo world i always find it very very interesting so um so one thing i have been so somebody today actually at the the tattoo place they asked me like i'm gonna use very cryptic words because i think youtube flags different words because everything is so gd political um so we're going to be using cryptic language so um the the sickness that has been going around the world we're gonna call it c for obvious reasons the whole experience we're gonna call p the the panty we'll call it the panty the c the panty and then the the poke uh the jab we'll call it the v don't take that in the gutter please um so somebody today asked one of the clients asked like oh did you get the v did you get <laughs> I know everyone's going to be thinking about something else. Did you get the poke? And the the tat, the boss was like, "Oh, I got the first the first round, but not after that." And um and he's like, "Did you to ask me?" And I was like, "No, it was kind of complicated cuz I wasn't a resident yet and I was trying to figure that out before I took the next step and he's like, "Well, are you thinking about getting it?" And I was like, "Well, I'm looking, I'm I'm investigating." And um and so on my way back home, I was listening to the Jordan Peterson podcast. Um and he had a at least for the first part I don't know if it's the whole episode. I haven't even listened to the whole episode, but the, um, this, uh, I don't even know if he is, I don't know. Let me see if he's, I don't know if he's a doctor. I don't think so. It doesn't say doctor. This guy, Norman Doidge. I think his name is anyway he wrote a um oh he it says since my days in medical school okay so he's a doctor <laughs> uh read francis read anyway he um he wrote this article 
called needle points and it's at least from all that i've read so far it's so interesting because we hear about both sides in the news we hear about do it get the poke because it will save your life and save everyone's lives and da da da, da. And then you have the other people who are saying, I'm not going to because this is such a political subject and it seems fishy and, you know, I just don't, I, I'm not convinced. And especially since now there's that break between the two lines, then now it's like, now, now when you say something, you're sticking up for your side. You have to pick a side. And, um, and the fact that people, even if they have gotten all the other pokes in their life, the V's in their life, just because they don't want to with this one, they're called anti-pokes. And it's like, well, they got the other ones. They're just not getting this one, but no one is, no one's willing to listen. And so... Uh, his article is really interesting and I highly, highly recommend it because it just takes it from a third party perspective because we're so used to, to hearing one side or the other and then the other side are completely insane. That's how it's presented. Like be on our side and if you're not, you're insane. And both sides are saying that and it's like, uh, uh. But they're not really saying, they're not really giving any reasons. At least in my mind, the pro poke people, like I just, I haven't, especially in my circumstance and my age and my health and everything, I, I haven't been really convinced yet. Um, so I'm going to let, uh, I'm going to let John Hopkins I found this. Oh, there we go. I'm going to let John Hopkins um, talk to me about the CV hesitancy. 12 things you need to know. So this is for people. So these are pro poke people talking to hesitant people. Um. So these are the ways that they're convincing people. So this is somebody in my shoes and they're like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm just not convinced yet. It's not that I'm like, oh no, I will never, but it's just, I'm not, I don't, especially now with the current strain and everything, I'm just, you know, it's not, I'm not as scared now as I was two years ago. If you were to talk to me at the beginning of this whole thing, the beginning of the panty that can that sounds like another word the pan <laughs> i'll just call it the pan um then you would have seen a very frightened francis who was spraying everything down and washing his clothes all the time and you know not going outside at all not talking to people outside nothing I was I was completely paranoid and now I'm just you know uh, for me personally in my life my the danger for me is not it's not there Aloha So let's see what they have to say let's see if they can convince me but this is just the language that we're getting right now and the in the article let me pull up the article so you guys can see this is the article from norman norman deutsch and it's a really cool graphic actually oh let me oh it's set up for the videos let me see if i can change this real quick uh, excuse me as I do some maneuvering. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da. You're watching in. Uh, how do I do this? 
I don't know how to do this. Well, anyway, the graphic is awesome. That'd be a really cool tattoo. Maybe in Harry Potter world, we can get moving tattoos like that, but not now. Um, anyway, so this is the article that he wrote, and it's extensive. But he talks about... He just, he just gives reasons, like, rational reasons why people would be hesitant. Like, look at, you know, the past hundred years and see all the things that have happened and all the other... The, all the other V's and pokes that didn't turn out well or how the um how you know big pharma was doing things with the government against normal people and then it came out later and then it was like oh and now we're just expected to be like oh yeah this is totally different you know it's because <laughs> in my lifetime this is like the biggest thing that has happened with sickness or anything. Is that the perfect graphic for showing how our freedoms are being restricted by big pharma? Yes. And we have the syringe in there. That's dripping. If you can see that. We have the, the snakes intertwined and uh, strangling the bald eagle. Interesting. Interesting. But it's just, but then it's this doctor, I think he's a doctor. He, he got the poke. He's like, I'm not a anti poke. Come on. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being hesitant is kind of rational it's kind of expected look at what has happened in the past somebody who's just you know zombie like robot like going along with everything that's happening it's like well maybe they aren't looking at history maybe they aren't seeing the full picture not that they shouldn't do it but the way that they're doing it the way that they're talking about it the way that they're pressuring people who are hesitant it it's not a conducive way to entice people and it doesn't seem very honest. I don't know what you guys think about it, but in my opinion, like I'm just at the point where I hear something on the news and my instinct is not believe and then get disproven by investigation, but I don't believe <laughs> that's the first thing like, well, We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what comes out. That that's my 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 way of approaching any of anything. Um I guess we can read a little. So he says here, oh, I wish I could turn How the heck am I going to do this? Wait a second. I'm going to figure this out so you can read it. Oh, oh. Oh. Wait, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do... Oh. I'll figure this out. I promise. Quick editing. Okay. That's better. It's not perfect. Let me just... Okay, that's better. Alright, good. Um, Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, well, I don't know if I really, I don't know if it's worth it, but it's, it's just, it's just very, it's very good. I, I highly suggest it. Um, I mean, everything is really... Uh, I'm trying to find... There's... Uh, and now these two sides of the V debate 
of the poke debate are tearing America apart. At many levels, families, friendships, states, and the federal government, it is it's even affecting the country's ability to deal with the pan the panty. Uh, splitting hop hospitals, staffs, and sondering relationships between the scientists studying it. Um, one of the reasons... This is... Yeah, good. Alright. One of the reasons our discussions of the poke are so emotionally radioactive, inconsistent, and harsh is that the BIS... Oh, okay, okay. First, BIS stands for... Where is it? B-I-S, right here. Okay. Alright, maybe when you read an article, Francis, you should do it in order, because things and ideas develop over time. Don't just go through. I, I just kind of wanted to get little parts out to, to maybe make anyone interested in reading it. <sighs> here we go. <laughs> we'll just start it. Since my days in medical school, I've had a fascination with the kernel insight behind pokes. That one could successfully expose a person to an attenuated version of a microbe that would prepare and protect them for a potentially lethal encounter with an actual microbe. I marveled at how its tutors an immune system that, like a brain, has memory and a kind of intelligence and even something akin to foresight. But I loved it for a broader reason too, at times modern science and modern medicine seem based on a fantasy that imagines the role of medicine is to conquer nature, as though we can wage a war against all microbes with antimicrobials, antimicrobials to create a world where we no longer suffer from infectious disease. That uh, poke is not um, based on that sterile vision, but it's opposite. It works with our uh, edicable immune system. It works with our edicable immune system, which evolved millions of years ago to deal with the fact that we must always coexist with microbes. It helps us to use our own resources to protect ourselves, doing so in accord with the essential insight of Hippocrates, who understood that the major part of healing comes from within and that it is best to work with nature and not against it well that sounds reasonable and yet ever since they were made available pokes have been controversial and it has almost always been difficult to have a non-emotionally charged discussion about them one reason is that in humans and other animals any infection can trigger an archaic brain circuit in most of us called the be behavioral blech, behavioral immune system bis it's a circuit that is triggered when we sense we may be near a potential carrier of disease causing disgust fear and avoidance it is involuntary and not easy to shut off once it's been turned on so that's the bis uh, behavioral immune system so when we're close to infection it it's it's triggering um the bis is best understood in contrast to the regular immune system the regular immune system consists of antibodies and t-cells and so on and it evolved to protect us once a problematic microbe gets inside us the bis is different it evolved to prevent us from getting infected in the first place by making us hypersensitive to hygiene, hints of disease in other people, even signs that they are from another tribe, since in ancient times, encounters with different tribes could wipe out one's whole tribe with an infectious disease they carried. This is super interesting. Any, anyone else interested? Um, once the foreign tribe had its own long history of exposure, exposure to pathogens, some of which it still carried, but to which it had developed immunity in some way. Members of the tribe were themselves healthy, but dangerous to others. And so we developed a system whereby anything or anyone that seems 
like it might bear significant illness can trigger an ancient brain circuit of fear, disgust, and avoidance. How many people now act like that? This whole... This whole, um... Pan... pan -ny, Uh... Has... Made us super paranoid, super scared, disgusted at other people, in a sense. Like, repulsed from other people. Um... And that is something that that's that is real triggered. If we want to put the word triggered on something, we can say that. I think I'm having issues with my connection. If something happens, just let me know, please. Anyway, this like this type of article is very enlightening. And it doesn't seem very politically driven. And that's, that's, um, that's great. I love it. Uh, he goes on, it can also trigger rage. Um, I'll just read the, this first part. So it'll maybe entice you to keep reading. It can also trigger rage, but rage is complex because it is normally expressed by getting close to the object and attacking it. But with contagion, one fears getting too close. So generally, the anger is expressed by isolating the plague bearer. Anger is expressed by isolating the plague bearer. The BIS, the BIS, is thus an alarm system specific to contagion, and I should add, to the fear of being poisoned, uh, which before the development of modern chemistry often came from exposure to living things and by dangerous byproducts such as venoms. Thus, it can be also it can also be triggered by non-animate things such uh, like body fluids of some kinds, surfaces others may have touched, or even more abstract ideas like going to the grocery store. I feel like this whole situation we've been in has lit the fuse in people and a lot of some people have overcome and they're gradually at re acclimating themselves to normal life and just the normal day to day exposure that we have to the world and all of its multitude of microbes. Um, but some people have not overcome it. This has chained them up and they're just sitting in the same state that we all were the first few weeks of this thing. Um, there's one exception. Oh, there's one exception. The BIS doesn't get or stay activated in people who don't feel vulnerable perhaps because they have good PPE or because um, their youth gives them strong innate immunity or because they don't or because they know they're already immune or because they're seriously misled or delusional about the reality of the disease. For everyone else though, that might trigger the system uh, is rather plastic, but once triggered, the system is involuntary. And what's the best way to manipulate and control people? By giving them something to fear and to give them paranoia. And I'm not talking about like, oh, the government, blah, 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 blah. Which, you know, I don't, I'm not like saying not. Like, there's this big plan to make everyone robots and irrational. But just in a... I don't know. Just I'm, I'm thinking back to my life in religion. Fear of hell, even though it wasn't the highest way of doing the right thing. The highest motivation. It was still something that was there. 
and you couldn't shake it off, especially after you did something wrong, because if it was bad enough, that's where you were going. It was a reality. It wasn't just something to dangle in front of someone. You know, this is maybe possibly going to happen, but you knew in that state of, of sin that that was going to be your destination. So that fear is very, it puts you in a state of, I will do anything to get out of this fear or to solve this fear that I have. I, I don't want to have this anymore. And it does become almost animalistic in the sense, like involuntary, like you're just doing, you're following, you're asking for advice. You're, you, you're just trying to survive. Um, I don't know how much more y'all want to read. I'll just keep reading a little bit more and then you can tell me like, let's go, let's move on. Okay. So the BIS is, I would argue, one of the instinctual reactions that's that missed appearing in medical textbooks, perhaps because we've not had a P, a pan on this scale for a hundred years because it focuses on potential bearers of disease the bis triggers many false alarms um since an infected what the heck um because it focuses on potential bearers of disease the bis triggers many false alarms since an infected person may at first show only the mildest or nonspecific symptoms, such as a cough or sniffle, before they become deathly ill. That's why even a small exhalation or a surface touched by a stranger could trigger the BIS. Uh, were it a medical test of danger, we would say this system tends to err on a false positive. Um, we see it firing every day now when someone drives alone wearing a mask. How many people have seen this? I see people all the time. Like you're in a car alone with the windows up. Oh my gosh. Uh, or goes for a walk by themselves in an empty forest, masked. Or when someone, say with good health and no previous known adverse reactions to the Vs, hears that a V can, in one in 500,000 ca cases, cause death, but can't take any comfort that they have 99.999% chance of it not happening because it potentially can. Before advanced brain areas are turned on and possibilities are factored in, um, the BIS is off and running. So it's on both sides. It's on both, both, both sides of the, the spectrum of people. One of our reasons for discussions of pokes are so emotional. Oh, I read this. Um, our radioactive and consistent and harsh is that the BIS is turned on in people on both sides of the debate. Okay, so it affects both sides of the, of the debate. Those who favor pokes are focused on the danger of the virus and that triggers their system. Those who don't are focused on the fact that the pokes inject into them a virus or a virus surrogate or even a chemical they think may be poisonous and, and that turns on their system, on their system. Thus, both sides are firing alarms, including many false positive alarms, that put them in a state of panic, fear, loathing, and disgust of the other. This seems like a breath of fresh air.
And now these two sides of the poke debate are tearing America apart. Da -da -da -da. We've read that. Um, as of writing, as of this writing, in the U.S., about 85% of people over 65, the age group most at risk, are fully poked against C. <laughs> More if you include those who had uh, one shot. 57% of the overall population um, is fully poked. 57% of the overall population is fully poked. But around June, the rate of poking slowed dramatically, drastically, down to less than 1 million a day from 3.4 million daily in April. Even though many more people age 12 and up were now eligible, 5 million people who got the first shot had not gone to their follow-up. States started sending pokes back while some poke sites were empty. In response, U.S. public health officials appeared to believe that the number of people who would voluntarily take the poke had reached a ceiling. The change could be seen from the top of the messaging system with President Joe Biden switching from persuasive to coercion of the armed services, federal employees, and as of September, uh, September 9th, of everyone working for companies with 100 employees or more, a category that includes about 100 million Americans. In this way, this should be the least likely time in history for poke hesitancy. For years, pokeologists <laughs> explained poke skepticism by noting that it largely existed because few had lived through a large scale panty and because pokes had already eradicated so many serious diseases that it gave rise to complacency about the threat. But today's poke hesitancy is happening in the midst of the, the, the pan um, in which over 700,000 Americans have died and a recent Rasmussen poll, Rasmussen poll found that a staggering one third of Americans believe officials are lying about vaccine. Oh, I just said it. I've been doing so good about poke safety. One third of Americans, you know, the idiots, right? Them idiots out there. They don't know what's good for them. Actually, no, because normally they equate the Southern accent with the idiots. Oh, <laughs> oh, those hillbillies over there. Oh. It's ridiculous. Um, it seems to me especially vital that we broaden our understanding of history and current state of poke pokes because over the summer, Many who chose the poke for themselves concluded that it is acceptable to mandate pokes for others, including those who are reluctant to get them. That majority entered the state of crystallization, a term I borrowed from the French novelist Stendhal, who applied it to the movement when a, first, when a person first falls in love. Feelings that may have been fluid become solid clear and absolute, leading to an all or nothing thinking, such that even the beloved's blemishes become signs of their perfection. Interesting. So even seeing negative aspects in your own side, in the you see flaws in the system, those even become attractive and, and you don't see them as something negative. Interesting. Crystallization as I'm using it here, happens within a group that has been involved in a major dispute. For a while, there is an awareness that some disagreement is in play and people are free to have different opinions, but at a certain point, often hard to predict and impossible to measure because it is happening in 
the wider culture and not necessarily at a ballot box, both sides of the dispute become aware that within this mass of human beings, there is now a winner. One might say that a consensus arises that there is now a majority consensus. Suddenly, certain ideas and actions must be applauded, voiced, obeyed, and acted on while others are off limits. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I think this is super interesting. It just makes sense. It's nice to read something and it confirms that you're not the only weirdo out there. No, it confirms like a certain perception that you have of what's happening in the world. Anyway, I'm not going to read all this. Um, in the midst of the pee, of the panty, seeing the unpoked as impure is no surprise because, of course, they could carry contagion. Um, but as Tocqueville pointed out, this also occurs when there is no contagion and we begin to experience those who are on the wrong side as impure, as in failing the purity test and react to them as though they were or that they are dangerous, that we do this even when there is no panty suggests that there is, along with realistic fear of infection, something else going on. Wow, go figure. A sense that those with whom we may disagree are impurities in the body politic, bad people who need to be taught a lesson, even punished. Wow. So now it's not even us against the virus it's us against the people the the other side the virus is no longer in center stage because both sides are getting infected right like even the poked people are getting infected and getting sick so it's like now we can't look at having it or not having it imagine the world where um uh Imagine the situation where, you know, the the poke made you immune because that's the thing. That's another interesting thing that's happened. They've changed the definition of the poke. They've changed the definition so that it doesn't mean that anymore, even though before that's what it was. So it's like manipulating the language so that the idea of all the other pokes in the past that have actually prevented the sickness now it's like no now it just helps you not get it bad enough or not not get it in the same degree it just helps you it's like wait so it's a it's not what it was before it's the same word it's the same word like, you know, how they say woman or man, you know, or something like that. Now it doesn't mean what it meant before. It's like, what do you mean what it meant before? This is the meaning. What's wrong with you? It's always been like this. And and you, you're like, wait, wait. And then you start guessing yourself, second guessing yourself. It's like a way of gaslighting people. Like, where have you been? That's That's never what it's been. I was talking to a friend and I was like, you know, I was telling him like, you know, this was before uh, months, months ago, probably like six months ago or something. And I was like, you know, I just, I don't get how they call the poke um, a poke. Like it's not doing what pokes normally do. And he was like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, just look at the definition of poke and it's not. You know, you can't get the, the the disease once you got the poke. Like, that's the point. 
And he was like, okay, let's look up the definition. And it was the change definition. So there I was looking like a complete lunatic. And I thought, have I just always thought the wrong thing my whole life? And then I saw articles. Like this one. Why the CDC changed its definition for the poke. And I was like, oh, oh, so either it's like one of those, what's it called? A mandala? Is it mandala effect? Not mandala. What's it called? The. Um, mandala effect. The mandala effect refers to a situation in which a large mass of people believes that an event occurred when it did not. Looking at the origin of the mandala, Man mandala, mandala, Man okay, of that effect, some famous pe uh, famous examples as well as some potential explanations for the strange confluence of perceptions can help to shed light on this unique. Ph anyway, you have one on point. It's it's like. Mandel, Mandela, Mandela. And when I see the double L, I think Mandeya, <laughs> like in Spanish, Mandeya, or in Spain, Mandeja, Man, Mandela, Mandela, Mandela. Why does that not? I've heard people say it before, but it's just not. Anyway, so. Um, anyway, we'll look at that. I want to look at, I want to look at what they're telling people who are hesitant for the poke because, you know, I know there's a bunch of people online talking about this, but a lot of them are just like, this is right. This is wrong. Do this. Don't do this. These people are idiots. These people are smart. Listen to, and it's just so black and white and it kind of, like the people who are in the middle, like kind of like trying to figure things out, like they want to be like, oh, yeah, of course, of course, it's right. Of course, that person knows what they're talking about. Of course, this person's lying to us. Of course, those people are idiots. You know, it, it makes you feel like I'm not I don't know. I'm not with it. I don't I don't I'm not getting what's happening or I'm I'm too paranoid or, you know, what what's happening you are not alone. The CV, the C poke, was created quickly, but was carefully tested for safety. So this is a an argument. It's like, well, you know, the testing wasn't really that long, and you know, everyone's acting like it's a hundred percent safe, but. Like, uh, the development for, I'm reading this part. I don't know if you can see it. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to scale this down again. All right. You ready? All right. I'm going to scale it and then zoom it up. Now you can read it. Good. Um, so I'm here. The development for the CV, the C poke did not cut corners on testing for safety and efficiency. The pokes were made using processes that have been developed and tested over many years and which are designed to make and thoroughly test pokes quickly in case of infectious disease pans, um, such as the situation now. The pokes themselves were extensively tested by independent scientists and more than 100 million people in the U.S. have been safely poked. Just trust us. It was all good. Just trust us. That's... I, am, I, am I insane? When we're dealing with health, like, that's... Like, you know, we can talk about the transsexual issue or, you know any any of any issue like that and it's kind of like all right but when we're dealing with with health i feel like 
this is a little bit more serious than everything else. Like people are losing their lives or, um, you know, it's destroying families, destroying families, these type of things. Maybe it was just a matter of time with those types of families, but you know what I mean? You know, it's just, it's, it's eroding unity. I don't know. The poke um, side effects are temporary and uh, do not mean that you're sick. The pokes uh, do not contain live uh, C, blah, 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 blah. Um, these symptoms, if they happen at all, are temporary, usually lasting only two or a day or two. They signal a natural response as your body immune system learns to recognize and fight the C. On the other hand, getting C can make you seriously ill with symptoms that linger for months or even longer. I don't know. Getting the poke can protect you from getting sick. The, the C poke work with your immune system so your body will be ready to fight the C if you're exposed to it, including variants like all of them, except now the new one, it doesn't, or I don't know. Who knows what's really happening? As the C panty continues, getting the, the poke is a powerful step in taking charge of your health. It doesn't do that. When was this written? Does it say when it was written? It doesn't even say when it was written. <laughs> um, um, diversity in the, the poke testing helped assess safety. Okay, so let's let's make sure that everyone <laughs> dang it missed almost an hour. No, don't worry about it. Um we're just talking about the poke because it's something that came up today in my when I was at the studio, someone asked me if I was poked. You know. Poked against the sea in the pandemic. Um and I, I was like, no, I didn't. And uh, and the person looked at me like, oh, you're one of them. You're on the other side. And it's like, no, I'm just, you know, trying to figure out what's the best thing to do for me in my situation with my health and the the danger that I'm in. Because I don't really get exposed to a lot of people. So, anyway, so now we're watching our language for censorship. It's like purity culture all over again. Isn't it ridiculous? I promise you, if you look at all the things that are happening now, it feels just like in religion. People don't realize that they left religion and they're living in another religion. And they're subscribed to it like it's... Like it's, um, what's that like phrase from, oh my gosh, like my grandmother used to say, it's hot like, and what is it? Um, I, it's, I'm, I'm totally blanking anyway. So now we have to say the testing was diverse. Why are we saying that? Because there are are there's a lot of hesitancy from certain minority groups because they've been effed over in the past by the government they've been effed over i'm just used to censoring that i'm not even gonna say fuck <laughs> but they have been and they're like hell no nobody's telling me what to do but look we tested it on minority groups Everything's great this time. Trust us. 
Do you have allergies? People of color are especially vulnerable. Generations of health inequities have caused black and Hispanic people, um, uh, sorry, black and Hispanic Latin Americans and other communities of colors to be uh, overrepresented in severe C cases and deaths. People of color are vulnerable. I thought we weren't saying people of color. Anybody? That, that seems like... That seems like a term from the 70s or something. Um, are more likely to be working frontline... Like... If you've already had C, getting the poke will add extra protection! And then it's like, am I losing my mind like I did with the the definition of poke? Let me... No, we'll do that next. So with the definition of poke, they changed it from being immune to helping. And the same with, um, you know, when you get sick with something, your immune system and you overcome it, you know. This all takes into consideration that you didn't die, you know, but if you ever overcame it, your your immune system built up defenses for it. So for a certain amount of time, your body just it it can fight against it. You know? Like that that was my idea before, but now it's like it's not good enough. But it's like not one mask, but two masks. It's like, yeah, living in a bubble, never go stepping outside of your house, never being exposed to anything. That's the best. Like, I just, I don't get, I, I feel like, I feel like when I, I read these things and I hear people online on social media talking, it's like, they're not real people. They're not talking to real people and they aren't real people. It's like, they've never lived you don't even know who's really talking and it's it's so annoying it's so annoying and then people look at you like you're questioning what they're saying you don't agree with them <laughs> talk to me like i'm a rational human being with a certain amount of real life experience in the world talk to me like I can think and I can understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. Don't talk to me like I have to say this and you guys are going to do it anyway. So it doesn't really matter that I'm saying it, but I have to say it so that I can say that I said it and that everyone knows that I said it. I don't know. I don't know if, if I'm just, if I'm the only one out here, but I, I, I really, I'm glad I'm in Mexico. Let me just say that. I will cheers to you with that. Yes. Good luck, everybody in my home country. Good luck. I hope it works out for you. People here are a little bit more realistic. They have their feet on the ground a little bit more for the most part. You have the people who want to be like, look, I'm good. I'm saying the right thing. But everyone looks at them like they're um, uh, spineless puppets. Getting the poke for C helps others in your community. Okay, that this... Okay, I'm in Florida, so it's semi-sane. Yeah, everybody's going to Florida for vacation. Um, uh, okay. This is a this is a strong argument that I've heard from people about getting the poke in the beginning. 
before it was out and when it was like just starting was like get it so that you don't you don't incubate it and then spread it and it was like okay that's that kind of makes sense you know like if you're able to do that if you you know you know why not help grandma remember grandma um so it was like okay that that idea it's like okay i can see the strength in that argument but then when people were still getting it even after and spreading it it was like oh i'm so sorry that argument just fell apart oh and it's like what what month is it it's february no is today february 2nd oh my gosh where's my head <laughs> I thought it was still January for a second. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's been too long. Start treating us like um, like we're adults and that we're we're capable of, of seeing what's actually happening. <laughs> More pokes for C mean a chance to get back to normal. Uh, uh, really? Really? After so many? Like, every single, every single person has to get it? Or what? Like, what, what, get back to normal? Come on. Come on, we're not little children. We're not little children, please. Look at these effing pictures look at these effing pictures look at this did they get the poke they're still in a in a mask is that back to normal this is the and it look around them it looks like they have a bubble they're living in a bubble that's the protection the the poke gives you no, you still it still comes in to your body and you can still get it and you can still spread. No, that that image is come on. I'm not stupid and I'm not going to be convinced by a effing cartoon. Yeah, pregnancy, breastfeeding, fertility. What was the name of that poke that was given to young girls for cervix cancer and it ended up um uh making them sterile i think or giving them i forget the name of it what the heck is that i'm sorry if you can hear that i have no idea what that is And it's like, oh, like, I remember that when I was in high school, I think it was before going into college, certain colleges were mandating it for students to get it. No, it wasn't high school. That's right. It wasn't high school. And it's like, that just fucked up the lives of a bunch of girls. It's not meningitis. It's, um... It's for cervical cancer. Why do I keep wanting to say like Gambutrol? Gambutrol? I'm so bad with names. Gambu... Gambutrol. What is Gambutrol? Oh no, Gambutrol is... <laughs> Gambutrol. Did anyone see the um exorcism of Emily Rose? Did anyone see that? HPV. Okay. HPV vaccine. Gardasil. Yes! I knew it was a G. Gardasil. Okay. 
Gar the sill. Suspension of Gardasil. I don't know what who's banging on some metal pipe. Um Gardasil Um Gardas okay, here we go. I'm gonna bring this over. Gardasil oh <sighs> What? Come on. Okay. The Gardasil problem. Oh my goodness. These stupid ads and the the stupid noise outside. That's all right. Um, the Gardasil problem. How the U.S. lost faith in a promising poke. I mean, are we just supposed to? negate that all of these things have happened in the past are we recently very recently in our lifetime <laughs> um yeah so women who are like oh, i'm pregnant and uh i don't really i don't think that's a good idea i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know i mean I'm not in a position to tell them what to do, but you you can see how people are like, you know, maybe maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll wait. See pokes, time is of the essence. People hesitate to get poked for many reasons, from personal views and fears to logistic problems, um, getting to poke sites. But waiting too long to be poked allows the sea to continue spreading in the community with new variants emerging. Severe sea can be very dangerous. The sooner you get poked, the sooner you are protected. When this whole, like, the whole poke situation and all the people on both sides and everything, when all that was, um flaring up i i automatically thought of all of the zombie movies where it was always like some poke for for some sickness i'm gonna see what's what's happening with the Whatever happened to normal human decency? I know that I probably do things that annoy neighbors, maybe. But I'm conscious of what I'm doing. I try to be conscious. We had last Saturday night, actually Saturday morning, I was trying to record the video that I just did. Which it took a long time, and uh, if you haven't seen it yet, where have you been? It's the hottest new thing on this channel. <laughs> but um, uh, in the morning, there were workers, and they were blasting music all morning. And I was like, all right, guess I'm not recording in the morning. And then my boyfriend came home from work. He worked half the day. And then in the afternoon, we spent time together. And then I was like, I'll do it at night because there were a bunch of noise, cars, and just people moving. And then at night, these one neighbors decided to close off the road, which is illegal, and hire a band, a live band, to play for four hours. And it was, it's the most annoying music you have ever heard. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can find um the type of music so you can hear at least like a few seconds of it um <laughs> i 
All right, let me pause this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see if this is it. Hour one. Hour two. Oh no, that might have been good. Oh, here we go. Hour three. Hour four. Anyway, so, um, here we go. How to decide, oh, how to decide if you should get the poke. Isn't it like everyone should already? Why if? Do your research. Your questions are important. Your questions and concerns are very important, but step this way to get the poke. But you can voice your concerns as you're in line. Um, your questions are important and getting the right answers from reliable sources can add to your peace of mind. I wonder what reliable sources those are. Talk to your family doctor and people you know who have been poked and learn all you can about the poke so you can make the right decision to get poked. I mean, you can make the most informed decision about getting poked. I'm trying to draw the religious parallel to all this messaging, maybe sanctifying grace. What do you mean by that? You need it or something else. I don't know. I'm not finding something that's I'm finding a more of a parallel with just like a certain non-doctrinal type of behavior that's imposed upon the community. That's not really based in the particular doctrine, but is something more particular to the community. Something that like the un um, like everyone else is doing it. Uh, well, there was a thing for us where we were told that electronics are a grave temptation to sin, especially phones or the internet, computers, television. And the ideal standard was not to have these things inside the house, the the house of God, the 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 sacred home of a Christian, to not have these items, to not have a phone, a computer, or a television in the house. I knew a lot of families who would hide away their television when the priest would come over. Hilarious. That's so funny. Like, put the TV in the closet. <laughs> Look, Father, here is our living room. Look how everything is centered around the people. And there, in that blank space, we have uh, a picture of the Sacred Heart. And then when the priest comes, they take the Sacred Heart down and put up their flat screen. I don't know. I don't know what um the heavy metal ingredients in tattoo ink remain wait the heavy metal ingredients in tattoo ink remain in the lymphatic system the immune system and compromise a person's ability to fight infection for life 
if you get maybe in the beginning or maybe maybe in a prison and maybe in the beginning when they were just using whatever ink just like some paint has um what's it called lead some of the early paints had lead i'm sure some of the early inks were toxic now it's non-toxic i know that for sure so um Oh, there's Aslan. Hi. Oh. Say hello. Um, yeah, so that's that. So, um the CDC talks about the poke immunization. Okay, definition of terms. Immunity, protection from an infectious disease. Immunity, protection from an infectious disease. If you are immune to a disease, you can be exposed to it without becoming infected. Okay. Vaccine. Oh, I just said it. Damn it. Poke. A preparation... A preparation that is used to stimulate the body's immune response against disease. Stimulate. Like some coffee in the morning helps me get stimulated to do my day. Oh, you can't see it. Damn it. I hate all these. I'm sorry. I don't want to curse. Um, well, dang. All of these websites are on different levels. Ta-da! Now you can read, kind of. I'm sorry, I did my best. There we go. Uh, Alright, that's as good as it's getting, sorry. Um... The poke, the act of introducing a poke, a oh, pokeization is the act of introducing a poke into the body to produce protection. Immunization, a process by which a person becomes protected against a disease through poke. This term is often used interchangeably with, wait. That doesn't even make sense. They say immunity here is protection from a infectious disease. If you are immune to a di disease, you can be exposed to it without becoming infected. And then here they say immunization, a process by which a person becomes protected against a disease through the poke. This term is often used interchangeably with poke pokeization or inoculation here a preparation that is used to stimulate a body's immune system response against diseases it's not the same thing in here the poke and immunity are not the same but they're saying that they can be used interchangeably i don't know i and then here Webs Miriam Webster, um, the first definition of poke, a preparation that is administered by an injection to stimulate the body's immune system response against a specific infectious disease, agent or disease. And here, a preparation of genetic material, such as a strand of synthesized messenger RNA that is used by the cells of the body to produce an antigenic substance such as a fragment of virus spike protein um interesting how this is like now specific to what's going on right now and then here 
Why did the CDC change its definition? Um, social media is calling bluff on the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for modifying its definition of the words poke and pokeization on its website, like we just read this one. Okay. Um, before the change, the definition for pokeization read the act of introducing a poke into the body to produce immunity to a specific disease. Now the word immunity has been switched to protection. I don't, oh, sorry. I don't care that things are changing. Words change, changing definitions, whatever, doesn't matter to me. But don't call me an idiot and change something and just be like, what do you mean? We never said it was that. It's just protection. It's like, wait, but it's it's the same. Um, the term poke also got a makeover. Love that. Love that for her. The CDC's definition changed from a product that stimulates a person's immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease to the current, a preparation that is used to stimulate the body's immune system against diseases like coffee. I mean, coffee. Anyway, that was a stupid analogy. Some people have speculated that the unannounced changes, unannounced, in my head, things that are done in secret are not done with good intentions. Especially things important like this. I mean, if you're going to change the type of toilet paper you use without announcing it to the world, go for it, buddy. But uh, something this big, and then you can't just like change something and then like look at the people who still think it's the other way and be like, you stupid. Um, some people have speculated that the unannounced changes were the CDC's attempt to hide the fact. Um, CVs, C pokes are not a hundred percent effective at preventing the C infection. Wait, so before they were called the same way that it was the same idea, immunity before. That's what we're going after. We don't want to just be protected. We don't want just like a therapy. We don't want like to take vitamin C. When we hear the poke, we want like, all right, I got it. Now the C is not going to come into me. However, a CDC spokesperson um, told McClatchy News that the slight changes in wording over time haven't infected, haven't impacted the overall definition. The previous definitions could have been interpreted to mean the vaccines were the vac the the pokes were 100% effective which has never been the case for any poke. So the current definition is more transparent and also describes the way in which pokes can be administered. The spokesperson said, um, all right, I don't need to give, oh, now you can't see this. Ugh. You know, bam, there we go. I am here. It's also important to note that the modifications to the definition of poke don't change the fact that pokes and the act of pokeization has prevented has prevented millions of illnesses and saved countless lives, the spokesperson said in an email. There remains the misconception that poke that the C pokes were designed to prevent infections altogether, leading people to believe that pokes aren't working as they should when they learn 
about breakthrough infections among the poked. But the sea poke pokes are doing exactly what they were designed to do, which is to prevent severe disease, including the need for hospitalization and death, and even in the presence of more dangerous versions of the virus, the, the virus such as the other variant. <sighs> then why call it the poke? Why call it, why use it the same word? It's just exhausting. Anyway, I just wanted to come on here and rant a little bit and give you the opportunity to rant as well. If you've been going through similar, um, similar thoughts, I guess. But, but check this, um, now you can't see this. All right, I'll do it real quick. Ready? Bam. Bam. All right, check this out. This, um, article out if you want. It just seems like it's pretty rational, like, um, I don't know. It goes in line with things that I've been thinking throughout this whole process. So on the tablet, Needle Points by Norman Deutsch, Deutsch, I don't know how to say his last name. Um, but does anyone else have any comments that they want to bring to the table? I think I'm going to end soon. I still have to make dinner. <laughs> I'm going to clean a little bit and make it dinner. Oh, I have class. That's why I started early. That was the reason why I started early, everybody. I have class at 7. Um, so an hour and a half for me. So this is your Q&A section. If anyone wants to ask me anything, I am an open book. It doesn't have to be about any of the, the topics from today. All right. Well, that was your opportunity, people. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to make another video soon. I have an idea what I want to do, but I don't know when it's going to come out. I'm still trying to figure out my new schedule and my life is more important than my YouTube life. Even though I do love that everyone here is here, but we have to have prioritize, right? So once I figure out how things are going, uh, the new video will come out and I'll try to do a live every week. We'll see how it goes, but I need to keep them kind of short to justify. So thanks for coming. Thank you, ex Catholic. Thank you, Pola. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, John. Is that everybody? Ube. Ube spam. <laughs> Is he a spammer? I appreciate it. And I appreciate that you're here actually talking. That helps me. So we're both in, in this together. Hopefully more people will talk in the future, but you got to start somewhere. And I'm almost at a thousand followers on YouTube. <laughs> and at that point I can start uh, making money. And I think at that point, once they start paying you for the views, then they want more, they want to promote you more. So it's like worth it for them as well. Um, so I think I'll get more exposure, which we'll see what happens. But I mean, I'm surprised that I have monetizing, just don't get blocked. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay. Ryan and Ryan. I think the other Ryan was my friend. Ryan Michael, yeah, I think he was. Oh yeah, he said aloha. 
Of course he. <laughs> I feel like such an idiot. Well, Ryan. Uh, Ryan and Ryan, thank you, and um, I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Really do. Even though this shit is going on in the world, it's like if you just focus on your day to day, it's not that bad. Things when things are in perspective, it's easier to deal with them. So, peace. A peace.